Hey everyone, it's Matt from Zenshop, and today I want to talk about uh, a slightly contentious topic about why you should build your next startup in a, mo a beautiful monolith like Ruby on Rails and don't follow the trends like serverless, JavaScript, and Golang. Um, so this is uh, like going against the trend of modern day web app development. Um, I totally appreciate this, but I've got good reasons to say what I'm saying. Um, so if you're a single sort of solo founder, uh, startup entrepreneur, and you're looking to build a really awesome uh, product for your users, and you want to ship things fast, get product validation, um, and then scale, um, you, you, you may be drawn into the, uh, the, the trends of, of the moment, which, as I mentioned, Golang, JavaScript, serverless, um, even uh, RPC, um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of ideas floating around at the moment, which in my opinion are actually going to hold you back from being successful. Um, and uh, the reason why those ideas are bad for you as a, as a startup founder is because they're just going to add a lot more complexity and time and cost to your development process. Um, serverless and, um, or let, let's just tackle one by one. So. Um, let's first, first approach the architecture. Um, so, so the architecture of the moment is obviously serverless. Um, everyone's talking about it, and uh, it sounds like a great idea. You decompose everything into little functions, and everything's kind of like testable and isolated and simple um, and uh, easy to even deploy uh, with, with um, frameworks like serverless.com. Um, but... Uh, in my opinion, it actually adds a lot of complexity and moving parts to your application, um, which uh, make it harder for you to ship. Um, now, uh, it's okay at the beginning if your idea is very simple and um, doesn't require too many functions, but as soon as you have like states across, you know, things and uh, authentication logic and you know, users and um, just, just I don't know probably how to describe this, but it's just that the, 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 the more things that your backend is going to be doing, um, the, the, the more pieces uh, in, in the puzzle that you're going to be adding. And uh, it, it, it is a bit of a minefield uh, using serverless. Um, whereas uh, the traditional frameworks like a, a monolith application, everything is just, just in one place. Um, like Ruby on Rails, um, I don't need to worry about the fact that uh, you know there's there's a different function to communicate with. Um, I'm just I'm just writing code in a single project, and deployment is simply uh, Git push, and everything is everything is then in synchronized um, uh, logging and you know just diagnosing problems is is just one big thing. Um, and then the next thing as well is uh, like the the language. Um, so the language that I've I've migrated from was GoLang. I, I wrote the initial version of uh, Zen Queries in GoLang. Um, one really cool language. I love GoLang actually. Um, it's uh, super concise, simple to easy to learn. Um, it had some like idiosyncrasies, like uh, didn't have generics at the time, but it, it, I think it does now. I've stopped writing Golang, um, uh, but now I'm using Ruby. Uh, and the main reason why I'm using Ruby is because of the framework. Ruby on Rails is, is really awesome. Um, now I found Ruby on Rails to be um, a really big uh, productivity win for me compared to the, the Golang stack that I was using. Now, the, the main reason why it was a productivity win for me was because in my previous stack, I actually had to assemble all of the different libraries that I was using myself. Um, so that's that's the philosophy that the Golang community themselves have uh, adopted, is uh, we don't like big frameworks. We want you know lots of small libraries uh, and then compose the libraries together to your big project. Um, so that has advantages, but it has disadvantages for me. And the main disadvantage was whenever I wanted to do some kind of thing that involved, uh, you know, like um, a dependency, 
uh, it, it, it was just more complicated to figure out how do I, how do I get that to work with my project? Because I've got to make it work with the other things in the project. Whereas w w with, a, with a Rails project, um, it's just it's so, there's so many conventions and standards to Rails projects that everyone kind of follows the same um, structure. So integrating with whatever it is, is, is relatively simple because, um, because the, the instructions are the same, essentially. Um, so I think one of the, the things that I was trying to do was, uh, as an example, and it was crucial to, the, um, to diagnosing problems with the API, um, was tracing the uh, GraphQL request. Um, and uh, uh, tracing the GraphQL request involved getting like performance statistics on which queries were going slow, uh, how we could optimize queries, you know, getting alerts on um, uh, how the API was doing. Um, so, so yeah, so we were using GraphQL, Golang, um, and trying to integrate uh, tracing into the uh, into the stack. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure. I mean, I've seen loads of uh, posts online uh, that people are doing this, but it's a lot more complicated. Well, I found it a lot more complicated to get this this stuff working um, than simply with with Ruby on Rails. And I'm using the GraphQL uh, Ruby gem. It was just a, it was just an installation of another gem and then logging into a dashboard. And then immediately I've got all these beautiful graphs and you know in-depth uh, analytics and, and details on, on the trace, tracing of um, the requests. Um, so, so the Rails magic is there. It's, it's just, it's, it's all done for you. Very little time spent uh, figuring out those configuration issues. Whereas with Golang, you know, literally just spending, for me, days getting that, that stuff done. Uh, and that's time wasted away from building uh, pro productivity, you know, um, customer facing features. Um, so, so yeah, this, this isn't around necessarily on the language themselves, because uh, in all honesty, probably Golang is better language compared to Ruby. But the, the, the approaches that these uh, communities have taken to the frameworks and um, so on are radically different. And the same, in my opinion, could be said as well for JavaScript too. Um, the, the, uh, the JavaScript community, I think, takes um, uh, a more similar approach uh, to the Golang one, where you have lots of small libraries. Um, and it's quite typical for like node-based projects to, um, to uh, assemble lots of little libraries uh, and do-it-yourself approach. To creating the back end, but I really think it's uh it's 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 not optimal for smaller startups to do that because you end up just with a yeah like I said a very custom um uh back end, but it, is it really delivering um functionality to your customers, uh, which is the most important thing you want to be you want to be focused on that rather than uh, technical problems and challenges that you're facing. Um, and monoliths like Django, Laravel, Ruby on Rails, it's all convention uh, uh, and, you know, they, they follow the conventions and you're just configuring the, the app to, to do those things. Um, uh, and it's, it's wonderful. Love it. Really, really good. I've really improved my productivity using Rails. The only caveat I have, uh, I'm, one, I'm, I'm slightly concerned about, but I don't think it's an issue right now, is when, when uh, the new version of ZenShop goes to production, um, Golang's just been incredibly stable for me. Um, the, the memory usage has been very low, uh, and the, uh, the stability of the application is quite high. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm relatively inexperienced with Ruby on Rails. Um, this is going to be the first time that I've launched a SaaS application with Ruby on Rails, um, and uh, the, dev the developer experience has been amazing, but now, now I've got the, uh, the joy of seeing how does it perform in production with my users. So I'll make um, a video on that in future as well, um, documenting my experience with Ruby on Rails as a solo founder um, uh, and, and how we deal with uh, users and scaling.
so that'll be fun yeah i hope hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what what you think about how you're going to approach building your startup or um what technologies you're using i'd, I'd love to know um yeah and um i hope to see you again thanks bye